Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and today's video is going to be an updated Dragoonity deck profile for the October 2019 format without Guard Dragon Agrapane. This card is banned now, so I guess, like, screw this card. It's definitely not something we can play anymore, so I had to reinvent sort of, you know, the base structure of a lot of the combos and figure out how we could end on the same boards that we could do previous format. If you're looking for a little taste on how that gets done, there is a combo tutorial already up on the channel that went up two days ago from when this video goes up. So if you're interested in seeing the at least base layer of how the deck changes in terms of how it combos to still do the same ending boards as previous formats with Agrapan, then check out that video. But hopefully this is my last Dragoonity deck profile that I ever do uh, on the channel. Unless the deck gets like an insane new support wave, I don't see myself revisiting this deck anytime in the future. Uh, and honestly, I've done three Dragoonity deck profiles in 2019. That is three too many considering how bad this deck is. This deck is uh, very, very not optimal in any stretch of the imagination, specifically because it's so fragile, even with this new wave of support that we got from Cybernetic Horizon giving us Sinidus and cards uh, like Romulus coming out in Rising Rampage and the Guard, and the, uh, guard Dragon package. This deck is just ultimately not really well equipped to stand up against uh, any sort of like stuff, but this is my take on the uh, on the current way that I think the deck should be played uh, ultimately because uh, a lot of things changed without Agrapain. Uh, specifically, you have to play a lot more extenders and uh, you need to be able to get to Ravine a lot more uh, like reliably and also just like be able to make Romulus and stuff. So, this deck sort of has two different angles it's trying to perform, but anyway. Deck is 42 cards, starting out with three monsters, the most important boy, Dragoonity Sinidus. I thought this card sucked once Agrapain went away and I was comboing with Duxes, uh, but then I optimized the combos and we're back to Sinidus because at least this card is a starter card. Dux is not a starter card. I wish we could play Dux because when you're activating, you know, Dux's effect you're equipping from Grave, you're not discarding a card to equip from deck, so it inherently makes your combos more, uh, like, economical, at least on a theory basis. But Sinidus is at least a starter card, so, like, that works. But, one copy of Blackwing Zephyros the Elite, you do not need more than one. This card bricks in multiples. If we were playing, like, six Ravines like we could in the past with three Terra and three Dragon Ravine, or if we were playing, like, the Golden Times when we had nine Ravines, when we had three set rotations, three Terras, and three Ravines, then this would be a card you could possibly play more of. Uh, but you access it in the combo, and you're just trying to get to the combo to access this card rather than using this to get to the combo. But... Three copies of Dragoonity Phalanx and three copies of Dragoonity Coos. Uh, you want to max out on these tuners specifically because you want to see them. Uh, you need to open some sort of play to get you to a Gaederg and then have an extender. That's the entire basis of this deck. So you need to be able to use Sinidus discarding a tuner or whatever. Or, um, you know, there's multiple different ways to get to it. Uh, but ultimately these cards are not as good as they were with Agrapan because with Agrapan you were able to use these being discarded off of a ravine or something or cards of consonants as pseudo extenders because Barca would recur them. Step one of the combo, you'd send it us into Kus into Barca, but now we don't do that anymore. So these things' roles has changed a little bit, but you still want to max out on them specifically because you want to see them. You want to make your hands a lot more uniform. Uh, but carrying on, we have three copies of Destruit of the Lost Dragons, uh, Frizen. This card is a fantastic extender. It's probably the best extender in the deck. Uh, would not play any less than three of this. If you're playing Cards of Consonance, this build doesn't play Cards of Consonance. Spoiler alert. Uh, I don't find that card good anymore without, uh, the previous capabilities of the deck. But regardless, this is still a card that is a combo piece in your hand. It's a combo piece if you discard it for Ravine. Um, this card is just fantastic. Uh, would never play less than three of this. Uh, because of the fact that, again, like you can discard it for Ravine and it's a combo piece in Grave. Uh, and unlike Dark Worm, it's a combo piece in your hand and you have multiple ways to get this to Grave or you can just have it in your hand and then it's a combo piece there. But, two copies of Supreme King Dragon Dark Worm. I don't think that this card merits a three of, specifically because, again, we only have four copies of Dragon Ravine in the deck. I'm not playing set rotation in this build because I do not like even the small percent chance of it you know, contributing to bricks, considering how many additional cards you have to play in this deck to actually facilitate the combos, and those cards are also bricks. But so, Dark Worm, uh, there's a lot of ways for us to send this. You can discard it off Ravine if you do draw it, um, but mainly we're just trying to send this to Grave and summon it. This deck has a lot of different angles of play. It has a lot of extenders that you can play uh, in this deck, and we are utilizing quite a lot of them, uh, because you either start with Sinidus, 
plus tuner, plus uh, plus an extender. So like you have uh, like Destrudo or Dragon Shrine or whatever. Um, or you have the capability of comboing the other way around, which is you just summon two cards that don't you know require your normal summon, like Dark uh, Dark Worm of Dragon Shrine and a Destrudo in your hand or an Instant Fusion or whatever. And then you're capable of making Romulus without normal summoning. Romulus searches Ravine, and then from there you're able to go Sinidus, uh plus Tuner, hopefully. So, like, it makes your hands a bit more, you know, good. <laughs> so, that's what we're trying to go for with this build. We're trying to make this build very well-rounded in terms of at least getting to Romulus. If you can get to Romulus without normal summoning, then you typically have the ability for uh, your play to take some form of uh, shape and go into a combo, um, utilizing, you know, just any third card because this deck is all about three card combos, but there's just various forms. Continuing on, extenders, more of them. Two copies of Groot of the Wind Spirit. I actually want to play three of this, um, because I'll explain why later, but it's actually like an interesting extender. Uh, it doesn't do n the right thing for the deck, but I can't think of a better card to put in this slot, specifically because it kind of acts like a starter, uh, because you can Dragon Shrine for Tempest or Foolish for Tempest. Uh, and then banish it for Garuda, and then that is Garuda plus a tuner, so that's Gaederg. And then you are one card away from having full combo, so you can have, you know, Instant Fusion, you could have Dark Worm, you could have, um, you could have Destrudo. Uh, there's a lot of different things that it gives you, uh, accessibility into. And if you already had a tuner, then you could search Mistleton, so, uh, it could also give you, uh, the extender for your combo. But, speaking of Mistleton, playing two of it. Uh, again, this is another card that I want to play 3 of, but the deck list is already 42 cards. Uh, this is one of the better extenders, uh, specifically because, like, it allows you to just make a lot more of your hands playable. Because, again, like, you could have Mistleton uh, plus, uh, say, Instant Fusion and a Tuner, and that's combo. Because you can Instant Fusion for Mavelis, summon the Tuner, make Gaederg, add in Discard Steam, and then Special Mistleton over your Gaederg, get your Tuner back, and make the Hieratic Seal. Uh, so, like, it's interesting. I want to play three of it, but, like, the other cards are just better. Like, Destrudo is just better than this, which is why I'm playing the third Destrudo instead of the third Mistleton. Um, plus, Mistleton is searchable off of Tempest, so you effectively can see this card a little bit more uh, readily than Destrudo, which, Destrudo, you have Dragon Shrines or you draw into it. Uh, but, again, Destrudo and cards like Destrudo and Dark Room can be discarded for Ravine, whereas Mistleton can't. Uh, so, like, playing those cards in higher quantities is more... Um, is more beneficial for you in the long term because it allows your combos to take less investment because when you're playing Ravine, you're playing a minus one from your hands because it just stays on the field and does nothing. So if you aren't discarding a card that summons itself back, then you're effectively making your cards and your combos take extra resources. Uh, so, like, we're not trying to do that. But one copy of Dragoonie Armor Leviton. This is needed for the optimized version of... Uh, of the new combo, you summon this off your deck, uh, out of your deck off of LP, and uh, you're just abusing it and making it into uh, part of your Titanic Galaxy because it's an 8. Uh, pretty alright card. Uh, if you are getting access into this card early, it also, this card is like kind of good in grind games a little bit. It uh, allows you to summon this back off of like Red Med or something, equip a tuner, make Ascalon. Um, so, like, it lets you do a few things. Uh, it's, it's interesting. Uh, it is still ultimately a brick, though. Uh, but at the same time, you can discard it off Gaederg and revive it mid-combo if you drew it. Uh, so you can discard it off Gaederg, adding a different extender, and then you can summon it back with Red Med and equip. So effectively, Red Med revives two cards there. Uh, there's multiple ways for you to modify combos to make different hands work if you draw specific cards. So, one copy of Tempest Dragon Ruler of Storms. This card is accessed through Gold Sark. It's accessed through Foolish or Three Dragon Shrines if you're trying to banish it with Garuda. Uh, definitely play this card if you draw it. Also, it contributes to one of the best combos in the deck because we are playing Garuda. Uh, like, if you... This card functions as an extender for the combos. So, like, you could open Sinatus plus Tuner plus Tempest, and that's combo. Because just like back in the old days, you'll go uh, Sinatus plus... Well, not, not the old days in terms of Sinatus, but you'll... Go Sinatus plus Tuner into Gaederg, Gaederg, add Garuda, discard the Tempest from your hand, and then Garuda banishes this, searches Mistleton, you special Mistleton over the uh, over the Gaederg, and then that gets the Tuner back. And that's actually a better combo for you, uh, because it allows you to uh, step up into some different stuff. You can make Romulus early, going into Barca, and then fueling the Guard Dragon play from there, and then do the Spheres play, tributing Steam, uh, tributing it for Steam late later. So like, it's actually a really cool combo. But, 
One copy of Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon. This entire deck is built around this card. We're trying to abuse it. Uh, so we're playing it, obviously. Uh, two copies of Miss Valley Baby Rock. You need to play two to make the most optimized version of the three negate plus spheres combo possible because you have to add this card and discard it twice off of Gaederg, off the last two times you used Gaederg. Uh, but this card is fine to draw. Again, if your hand is a combo-oriented hand, uh, then this card is fine to draw because, again, you're just going to be adding a card like Garuda to your hand, which is why we're playing Garuda. Uh, because if you're not playing Garuda, then you don't have a way to search an extender uh, to make discarding cards that you drew that were not optimal to draw worthwhile. So, like, if you drew this card, you just add Garuda to your hand, and then you discard Baby Rock. So, you've gotten a free extender out of the Garuda, and then this was facilitating the same purpose that it had already. Uh, wouldn't really play three of it, because it doesn't trigger off Ravine. It misses timing off Ravine. Um, so, like, that is something noteworthy. Uh, if you didn't know that, I don't know how you couldn't know that, because that's been a thing that people have known about this deck for years. Uh, but regardless, like, you need two for the combo, so I'm playing two. And then lastly, Blackwing Steam to Cloak. Again, this card is also fine to draw because, again, same thing. If you draw it, you add a card like Garuda with your uh, Gaederg, and then you discard this, and then you're in the same place you were before, but now you have a free extender in the form of the Garuda. Uh, this card, you have to play it. Uh, it's really good because it effectively triggers your spheres. It triggers uh, to give you a token, giving you more link climbing potential, uh, all that sort of stuff. Uh, but then last monster is the Amorphage Goliath. Of course, we're trying to utilize this off of our spheres. Uh, summon after we bounce a card on the opponent's turn because the board ends on Crystal Wing, Borload Savage, and Titanic Galaxy. So summoning Goliath makes the most sense because you can protect it. Your opponent can summon from the extra deck and they're facing down three negates. One spell negate, one omni negate, and one monster negate. And they've already had a card of theirs bounced, so like they probably aren't going to be able to play through that. But that's all the monsters. That is 26 monsters. And then moving on to the spells, there are 16 of them to round out this 42 card deck. Three copies of Dragon Ravine, obviously. Well, four copies of Dragon Ravine. I actually wish Terraforming was still at multiples. I wish Konami would just, like, ban the problematic field spells that they generated and created and put Terraforming back to three for, like, the shittier field spell decks, like this one. Because, um, like, <laughs> you made these field spells. Just ban them, forehead. Uh, but... Those four cards, you gotta play them because they start fixing hands and stuff, and if you're discarding Worm or Destrudo for them, then they're free. Uh, one copy of Dragoon Divine Lance. Uh, I don't like this card in multiples because if you use it early, then it means your Romulus loses value, so you always want to be adding this off Romulus, uh, depending uh, on what combo route you're going down. Uh, having multiples of these sucks, so you just want to play one. Uh, Gold Sark to trigger Tempest from deck, obviously. Monster Reborn, because it is the best just generic extender. Uh, like, obviously, if you open Citadus plus Tuner plus Reborn, that's also full combo, because you just make Gaederg, and then you use Monster Reborn on your Tuner. That's your second dragon. You make Spheres, Tribute Spheres for uh, Steam, and then you're off to the races. But if you get to hold this, or it's a good, you know, top deck for recovery if you need to do that, uh, it lets you play through Hand Traps a bit as well, which is neat. Um... I mean, run Reborn. <laughs> run Reborn. Uh, one copy of Foolish Burial, and then three copies of Dragon Shrine. Uh, I'm playing three copies of Shrine and one Foolish because I really, really, really want to get to my Extender cards. Um, now, you might be thinking, oh, duh, Dragon Shrine's a hard once per turn. I don't care about that. Because usually, if your hand involves Dragon Shrine, you're going to be able to do one of two things. You either have Garuda in your hand, which means that you're Dragon Shrining for Tempest. Tempest gets banished for Garuda. You can add a card to your hand, like a tuner, normal summon the tuner, and then make Romulus. Um, and then Romulus searches Dragon Ravine, which can discard the other dragon trying to do something like send to Strudo, and then you can keep comboing. Uh, or you can do things like, you know, again, send Dark Worm with this, or send to Strudo with this. Uh, you have multiple different extenders with this deck in the form of, like, that like cards that don't require your normal summon. So as long as you see one dragon shrine, you can dragon shrine for Dark Worm. Summon the Dark Worm, and then you have to have, like, Instant Fusion, uh, Destrudo, uh, any sort of, like, extender. You could even open Foolish and send Destrudo as well, uh, and have Worm Destrudo from Grave. You can make Romulus Search Ravine and do stuff from there, and then you just discard the other Dragon Shrine that you drew. Uh, so, like, that's not a problem. I'd rather see this card. I'd rather see two of this card than none of this card, uh, specifically because it functions like the extender. It gets your Dark Worm in Grave. Uh, it gets your Destrudos in Grave if you already, like, had access to Dark Worm. Like, if you opened Ravine, Dark Worm, and Shrine, you can Shrine for Destrudo, discard the Dark Worm for Ravine, and then do stuff from there. There's a lot of different things you can do, uh, with, uh, this in particular, as well as the fact that, again, because we're playing two copies of Garuda, you have the chance of opening Shrine or Foolish with Garuda, 
and then you can just send Tempest and banish it for Gruda. Uh, carrying on with Extenders, two copies of Instant Fusion. Uh, again, this is another card that I'd like to play three of, but ultimately don't have the space for it. Uh, so that's just, it is what it is. <laughs> and then the last three cards in the deck are three copies of Call by the Grave, because we are trying to not get hand trapped. Now onto the extra deck, all 15 cards are pretty straightforward. They're, you know, 12 of them are used for comboing purposes and the other ones are just like utility based. One copy of Dragoonite Romulus, two copies of Hieratic Seal of the Heavenly Spheres. Obviously, if you've seen the combo video, you know that you need one of these to combo and then you end on one because you tribute one from field with Steam the Cloak and that summons Red Med from your deck. Uh, or if you're using it later in the combo, you summon Red Med off LP and you're using Sphere uh, to summon your Leviton from deck, or if your LP gets hand trapped, then you're making spheres and then just summoning red med from your deck anyway, because you're using the, uh, the steam later. Uh, like it just makes the deck really, uh, really interesting in like certain routes that you can play through, uh, in terms of like playing through hand traps and whatnot. Uh, guard dragon LP and guard dragon Pisty, aggro pain is dead. I think these cards are a lot more fair now, but they're actually still kind of unfair. Um, it's really weird. Like, I thought that these cards would be fine without Agrapane, but LP is just actually too much. I actually probably think that Agrapane Pisty would have been, like, more proper to leave in the game. Like, LP is actually just insane. Uh, in not just this deck, in a bunch of other decks. Like, LP was probably the one that needed to be banned. Uh, <laughs> truthfully. Like, Agrapane Pisty sounds a lot less threatening than LP Pisty, uh, in retrospect. But, whatever. It's what we have. We're gonna use them. Uh, triple Burst Dragon, because you need it for the combo, and occasionally you can revive it, and, you know, against Striker, you kill their Link, and they can't summon Ray, because you negate the Ray. Uh, and then one star, you just Skull Dread. That is all the links. You could potentially play something like Twin Triangle Dragon or whatever, uh, or another star, Yujo, just to fill out space, or maybe even a Boral Sword. You definitely got three, uh, like, flexible slots in this extra deck, but I digress. Uh, one copy of Dragoonite Gadarg, one copy of uh, or Gadarg, one copy of Vajrayana, and one copy of Barka. Uh, you only really need one of each of these. Uh, you don't need two Barkas. You could play a second Barka if you want to, uh, but again, you don't need to because Leviton exists, so you're just using this once. Uh, Vajrayana comes up in a lot of really weird combos where you can uh, where you use Vajrayana as a way to get two dragons on the board quickly. Um, like, would say, like, Garuda as an extender or whatever, because you can Garuda uh, and step up into this and then fake about, like, basically turning your Garuda into a dragon without losing anything. Uh, you can also use it to step up into Ascalon by equipping Kus. Uh, so that's nice. Uh, this is obviously the best card in the extra deck, so you definitely want to play it. Uh, Borload Savage Dragon, too good not to run. Don't ask me if there's a replacement for it, because there isn't. If there was, then we would be playing it. Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon. <laughs> Another one of our negates. And then the last uh, Synchro in the extra deck is Ascalon. Like, this card is just too high impact not to play, in my opinion. Uh, especially if you're dealing with flex slots in your extra deck. Like, the fact that this can just, like, clear an entire board of monsters and banish those resources. And then it's just huge. <laughs> like, it's just too many good things about the card. Uh, you're never making this turn one because its floating effect sucks. Uh, you're making this, like, if you are in a situation where it's beneficial to you. And that's usually a position where you're clearing a board to go for game. And then the last two cards in the extra deck are Titanic Galaxy and Mavelus for the Instant Fusion. We're playing Mavelus instead of Darkfire Dragon, specifically because the worst hands you can get with this deck are hands where you do not have a level 4 Winged Beast to make your Gedurg. Uh, so if you're playing Darkfire Dragon to make this into a Dragon Extender, um, you lose out on the ability to make Gedurg with a lot more of your hands. And if you're capable of making Gedurg, then your hand is usually capable of being corrected and fixed. Uh, so it doesn't matter that that's not Darkfire Dragon, uh, truthfully. But that is the deck. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Again, if you're interested in the combo tutorial that I did for this, it is on the channel. Definitely look for it. It is under the name of Painless Dragoonity Combos because it is uh, a Dragoonity combo without Guard Dragon Agrapane. So, hence, Painless. Tee -hee. Uh, but other than that, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. As I've already said, if you're new here, consider subscribing. Can't promise I'll do any more Dragoonity content because I hope to never actually have to put this deck together in a pile of sleeves ever again. Uh, because like I like doing like theory and combo like testing with this deck, but I hate actually having to try to make it work practically because the deck sucks. 
uh, and it's not competitively viable, and that's really what I try to focus my attention on, is something that's even got a hint of competitive viability to it, which this deck doesn't. But you got to take some of the good with the bad. People know me for this deck because I did stuff with it for years. But anyway, if you're interested, there's links in the description to my Twitch channel as well as my Discord. I, twi I uh, Twitch live stream at least three times a week, usually. If you want to go follow that, feel free to get notified next time I go live. Or if you are looking for the direct stream schedule or just want to chat and talk some Yu-Gi-Oh! theory and stuff, link to the Discord for my channel's Discord is in the description as well. But other than that, like, comment, subscribe, as I may have already said. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your time as usual, guys. And take care. Hopefully, I will see you in the next video. And hopefully, I never make a Dragoonie video ever again.